Hi, and welcome to the last day of September and then the first week of October. Thomas Miller from the Fun Astrology Podcast. We have one big elephant in the room this week, and if you follow the sky, you know what it is. The eclipse plunked right down in the middle of the week. So let's take a look at what this week has in store for us energetically from the sky. This is Monday morning's chart, and we have one big aspect that takes place right after midnight Monday in the East Coast. So for most of the country, it will be obviously later in the evening Sunday. But that's the two great malefics in Hellenistic astrology, the ones that drew the fear and angst of the masses. <laughs> Mars, the god of war, and Saturn, Lord Karma. But they're in a favorable aspect. This is a trine aspect. It's a 120 degree angle apart in the sky. And that is giving us some indications that this is wanting to help us. So let's dig a little deeper and find out in what areas. Well, first of all, Saturn is in the 12th house. That's the house of secret sorrows and self-undoings. It had bad karma as well in ancient astrology and still has that implication. But it really is, you could say, the area where we are released from our imprisonments. It's our hidden genius as well. It is the house that is ruled by Pisces, which is of secrets. So this is where we go deep. Neptune, the Lord of the Sea, rules Pisces. So we are going all the way down. We are going deep to dig out things in our karmic life, in our spirit world. Let's think about Pierre Tillhart de Chardin's famous quote that I use a lot. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And on that second part of his little quote, that's where we find the 12th house that we are spiritual beings, and within this human context, we come to release various secrets that were brought in from the past. And that's a big part of what I think this aspect is giving us here, the start the week on Monday, that Saturn is willing to say, I'm going to help you and I'll do it amicably unless I have to do it otherwise. And that's always the mode that Saturn is in. But there's a lot of power behind this because obviously Mars is at the table. Mars is in the sign of Cancer. Cancer is ruled by the moon. So this is our intuitive aspect. Like we can connect to so heavy in this aspect because Cancer ruled by the moon, Pisces ruled by Neptune, that is our connection to our source. That's the connection to those internal vibes. So I wouldn't be surprised here on Monday if some kind of little synchronicity, if you're watching for it, might pop up. Something that you just either catches you off guard, it's a surprise, it's something out of the blue, and it makes you just stop to ponder. I kind of had this a little bit, I guess, for myself around this storm in North Carolina because the little town where I was got inundated with flooding, debris, everything running down off of those mountains. Everything in North Carolina is in some kind of way a ravine or a valley. And all of this water came pouring off of those mountaintops right down into those valleys. And that's why there's so much damage in all these areas. Totally unexpected. Nobody would have had the the forethought to think, oh, it's just a hurricane and it's so far away. And by the time it gets to North Carolina, it's usually gentle mountain rains and it goes pretty fast. Not this time. And we saw what Mother Nature can do when it still has a lot of water in the air. It rings it out. It falls down those mountains. And I would have been shut down. I mean, I still haven't heard from two of three people that I reached out to and I'm just trusting that they're okay. One is a family relative. I have a second cousin in, in the town of Blowing Rock, and I, he's up in his 80s, and I hope, he's, I hope he's well. But I think back on this because I was lifted out of that area by something totally unexpected all the way back in March. And don't think that through this week, as been watching the news stories and seeing the pictures, that while I miss that area tremendously, and I've, it's been a tough summer because it's a lot hotter here than I had hoped, and I uh, don't do well with that extreme heat anymore, and I have looked up at the sky so many times over these last several days and just thought, 
wow, I have no idea why, but following intuitions, following synchronicities, following the breadcrumb path of the universe, and all of a sudden, through a lot of power and through some intuition, I'm here and not there. And I know I live nine miles from the San Andreas Fault, but, I mean, where can you not find some feet of nature and extremes of temperature? So... I'm just grateful. This is kind of the energy that I would say to expect from this today, that there could be some power from it. So if you get that little impulse to take a look at something like I did in January, I came out here to shut this down, to, to end this conversation of moving out here. So you just be always in tune with your intuition. That's the message here. Now, the other aspect here on Monday is the sun in Libra is going to be conjunct Mercury. And these guys just passed over the South Node, of course, last this past week. That was last Sunday's aspect. So we just have this emphasis on communication right now. The sun in an air sign, Libra, ruled, of course, by Venus. And here's the other kind of neat thing about how all this ties together. You see this triangle that shapes up right there? Well, that is all positive energy. So this is bringing Venus into the equation. And even though Venus doesn't like this thing right here, which is called Scorpio, <laughs> it doesn't like Scorpio, it likes Libra. And see, it just moved out of Libra into Scorpio. And whenever a planet moves to the next sign, except one time, and that is when Saturn moves from Capricorn into Aquarius, this one right here, the planets are generally grumpy in the next sign. So Venus is grumpy where it is in Scorpio. However, it is in this positive aspect right now, which is giving us a lot more heartfeltness about all of this. Um, so Mercury being ruling the mind, Libra, an air sign of the mind, this is connecting the mind to this triangle of the heart and the soul and the intuition. So it's a great time to analyze both sides. That's the bottom line. It really is a cool picture. I mean, when you break all this down and you think about both sides of it's go back to Chardin's quote, right? We are spiritual beings. Well, that's all the air or the water signs, the Scorpio, the Cancer, the Pisces. All of that represents our spiritual path balanced and, of course, included in this human package represented by Mercury and the Sun. So it's a time to bring both worlds together and work on both our headspace and our heart space and be listening for those special messages. Now to Wednesday and the eclipse. And my chart is set to the morning. I like to look at the morning hours to see where the sun is and, and as we begin the day. That's how I do my podcast. But the moon hasn't quite caught up with the sun yet. It's almost there. The eclipse is at 2.49 p.m. Eastern. It could be a minute on either side. If you want to see it, of course, it will be on uh, YouTube generally has several channels that carry it live. The only place you're going to see it in the world is down on the tip of South America. So this is not something that we will see with our eyes unless we watch it but we will feel it certainly energetically. Eclipses are just wonderful experiences. I love them. This is a new moon, so the sun and the moon will be together at 2.49 p.m. I have this little midpoint. That's what that is right there. That's the midpoint of the sun and the moon. I keep it on the chart because it's a very important piece of real estate in astrology, and I just keep it there to have it front of mind that I can remember it. The sun and the moon will be together. It's a new moon, and new moons are about bringing new things into our life. I did go back and look at something from a book that I have on financial astrology. If there's one thing that financial astrologers weight more heavily than anything else, as far as what might happen to a stock chart or a stock price over the next six months, it's an eclipse. So I went back to pull some notes from that, and this is from Profit from the Planets. Uh, the lady that writes it, her name is Kate. She's Australian. She's put two books out now, and that's Profit with the Planets is her website. You can go buy it directly. I don't think it's on Amazon. But she has some really good financial information in there if you're interested in learning financial astrology. That's where this came from, credit where credit is due. And she mentioned that the one thing about eclipses from a financial astrology perspective is they can cause wild swings 
especially if the, the eclipse by degree, and this will be at nine degrees in Libra, if the eclipse by degree is near within a few degrees, a uh, company, like if you take a company's birth chart, the time that it was formed, if it's within a few degrees of the sun, for example, I have a list of some of the things that are mentioned, but it can influence things more. So you could look in your own natal chart and see what you have at or around nine degrees, maybe plus or minus, say, three. And especially if you have something in Libra or Aries or the angular points, so that would be Capricorn and Cancer. If you have something on either side of nine degrees in any of those signs, this might affect you more strongly than others who don't have that. Now, you could also look at the square aspects and the trines and the sextiles, but we won't go into all of that. However, you could diagnose or go into that on your own chart if you are uh, up to speed on reading your chart in that way. And by the way, if you're not and you want to learn to speak this language, at least to be able to do what we're doing right here, I have a course at funastrology.com. It's appropriately labeled the 101 course. Not the most brilliant name, but it gets the message across. It's nominally priced. I think there's about 13 hours of material, totally self-study online, and you can learn the glyphs and how it all fits together and what they mean and how to put them together so that you could literally do what we're doing right here by completing that course. And we'd love to have you pop in and check that out if you would like to learn astrology. But the solar eclipses, which this one is, tend to happen faster than in financial astrology now. But we can apply some of this to ourselves. Faster, six weeks kind of window. The lunar eclipses, which we had two weeks ago, are up to six months of time in advance. So financial astrologers more heavily weight a lunar eclipse over the solar. But some, as Kate mentioned, she did, cover both. Now, another thing to look for. If the eclipse is either on your sun, which is, let me just clear this out and I'll show you. The sun is really easy to see. There's the sun. Or the ascendant point, which is typically over here, or the midheaven point, then it's stronger. And if the sun, now let's go into positives and negatives. If the eclipse is on your, say, Jupiter, let me get rid of that. There we go. If the eclipse is on your Jupiter, Uranus, or Neptune, those can be more favorable. If they are on Saturn and Pluto, obviously, less favorable. The sun, the nodes, Saturn, and Pluto. So add the nodes to that list. Those can be more challenging. And then if it is conjunct your south node, that's this point right here, which it basically is in this case in the sky, that can be totally transformational. So one of the things we could anticipate from this eclipse is that kind of transformation. On the audio podcast, which is also here on YouTube and, uh, yeah, not on Instagram yet. We don't have them on Instagram, but it is on YouTube and all the audio podcast channels. Elisa Dixon will be with us on Tuesday, and she has some wonderful insights about the eclipse. So I'm going to wait and let her speak on Tuesday because I just love how she put it all together. But one thing I would add and throw in the mix is that this is close enough to the south node of the moon that one of the things, in addition to what she talks about regarding relationships, because we're in Libra, we're in the seventh house, etc., cetera, uh, is this transformational possibility. And, oh, there are there not so many areas in our world that need to be exposed. And see, this is where this aspect on Monday kind of fits back in, because this is positive. So if something comes to light, see, and here's the ruler of the 12th house and the ruler of Pisces and the ruler of lies and secrets and covering up of lies. So if something comes up from this over the next, say, three to six months from the time of this eclipse, don't be surprised. And it would be for our good if it does. 
Now let's skip up to Saturday. And even though there's really not anything on Saturday, I just put it in between Friday and Sunday because that's what closes out the week energetically. There's nothing on Saturday. There is one aspect on Friday that is Saturn and Venus come in this trine. We really have already talked about that. And then Saturday, Mars, this little slippery guy right here, goes into its shadow period because it's turning retrograde when? Not until the first week of December. So it's going to be in a long shadow period. But beginning Saturday morning early, just after midnight, Mars will be in its shadow period for the next, well, what? All of October, all of November, and then it finally goes retrograde. So it's a long shadow. Mars is moving slow right now, and it will be in this trine to Mercury. I always look at the, or sorry, this square to Mercury. I always look at these as you better watch what you say because Mercury is all about communication. Mars is about challenges and it can cause conflict. The other thing, like if you were in North Carolina, and I know a lot of people were planning even on traveling to North Carolina to see fall colors, that would be super highly discouraged. But anything transportation related, like it would just not be wise this week, next week, probably the rest of this month, probably the rest of this year to be traveling around in Western North Carolina, especially. But you might look at this in your own, like be a little extra cautious over the weekend in areas of related to conversations. So don't fire that text right back. Don't send that email, you know, like I'm going to get, uh, don't be a keyboard warrior. If somebody says something and you need to take a pause, count to 15 or 20 or 30 or however long to say, ah, I'm just going to let it go, you know, let it, let it, let it pass. Let it pass. That's a really good way to apply this over the weekend. So those are the energies of the week. Like I said, the big one is right in the middle, and we'll see how it affects things, especially related to our relationships, transformational energy at the table, new creating energy at the table. Elisa Dixon unpacks all of it on Tuesday for us on the audio podcast. I have a few thoughts about it on Wednesday. We will see you on all the daily episodes. I hope this helps give you a visual for the rest of the week. I'll see you on Level Up if you're catching this on Sunday, and then if not, on the podcasts. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching.